The Canisaro reaction is a base induced disproportionate reaction of non enolizable aldehyde to form carboxylic acid and alcohol. A non enolizable aldehyde is one with no alpha hydrogen atoms available to form an enol. In the image, you can see how an enol is formed if there is alpha hydrogen atom. Alpha hydrogen can be removed fairly easily due to the resonance stabilization which is when the charge can be shared between atoms forming an enol. In aldehydes without an alpha hydrogen atom this does not take place and it gives a special reaction called the Canisaro reaction and this was explained by Stanislavo Canisaro and thus the name of the reaction. The chemicals that you need for this experiment are 27 grams of potassium hydroxide, 30 grams of benzaldehyde, 150 milliliters of diethyl ether and distilled water. Start by adding 27 grams of potassium hydroxide flakes to a small 50 milliliter beaker equipped with a magnetic steering bar. Then 18 milliliters of distilled water was added to dissolve the potassium hydroxide. Some amount of water was added to the container which had the potassium hydroxide stored to wash out everything. Steering was then turned on and everything was dissolved and resulted in a colorless clear solution which is a very highly concentrated solution of potassium hydroxide. Now a 250 milliliter round bottom flask was clamped on a stand and into it was added 30 grams of freshly distilled benzaldehyde. Then the highly concentrated potassium hydroxide solution was added to it. After adding the potassium hydroxide, the flask was shaken vigorously to make a uniform suspension inside the flask. Once we have a uniform suspension without any separate layer formation at rest, the flask was kept with the cap on without pressure. It was placed overnight. An exothermic reaction takes place leading to the formation of our desired products. After 24 hours and when the distinct odor of benzaldehyde is no longer present, very few milliliters of distilled water was used to dissolve the contents of the flask. Potassium benzoate is extremely water soluble but benzyl alcohol is relatively less soluble in water. Hence the final solution might appear a little turbid but that is not a problem. To prevent excess addition of water, add water in small quantities at a time and then vigorously shake the flask so that the solid will dissolve in least amount of water. The next procedure involves separation and purification of the two products. For that a 250 milliliter separatory funnel was clamped on a stand and the contents of the round bottom flask was added to it using a funnel. Now we will extract the benzyl alcohol from it using diethyl ether. We have to wash the contents of the separatory funnel 5 times with 30 milliliters of diethyl ether each time. Here I have added the first batch of 30 milliliters of diethyl ether. The separatory funnel was then taken out of the clamp and was it was capped and then shaken with frequent venting to release the internal pressure. Then the funnel was clamped again and the layers were allowed to separate. The upper layer is the ether layer and the lower layer is the aqueous layer. The ethereal layer will contain the benzyl alcohol and the aqueous layer has the potassium benzoate. After the first extraction, transfer the aqueous layer back into the separatory funnel and add another 30 milliliters of diethyl ether. Repeat this procedure 5 times with diethyl ether 30 milliliters each time and this will make sure that all of the benzyl alcohol is extracted from the solution. After 5 cycles of extraction using ether, 
The ethereal part was taken in a round bottom flask and all the ether was removed using distillation. This way you can recycle the solvent diethyl ether. Ether has a very low boiling point and for uniform application of that low heat I used a hot water bath. Once all the ether was distilled over, the water bath was replaced by an oil bath and the residue that contains benzyl alcohol was distilled. Aluminium foil was used for efficient heat. At around 208 degrees Celsius, distillation has started and the product is getting distilled over in a steady sequence. It is actually a colorless clear solution as you can see in the initial part of the condenser. Unfortunately, my receiving flask contained some organic dye stain and the liquid attained a faint yellow color in the receiving flask. But that is not going to be an issue for me. I obtained 11 grams of benzyl alcohol which represents 76% yield. Then I poured it into an amber glass bottle for storage. Now moving on to the separation of benzoic acid into the aqueous solution which we had separated from the ethereal layer we add hydrochloric acid very slowly as the addition of hydrochloric acid to base is extremely exothermic neutralization reaction. Once the pH becomes neutral you can see benzoic acid will precipitate out and a white precipitate of crude benzoic acid is obtained. This was then filtered. I used a vacuum filtration for very easy filtration and you can see the crude cake of benzoic acid here. Now we will be purifying the benzoic acid crude product by recrystallizing it from hot boiling water. Before going to the recrystallization part, I washed the crude benzoic acid couple of times with distilled water to remove the excess acid present. These are the beautiful needle shaped crystals of pure benzoic acid obtained by recrystallizing using hot water bath. I obtained around 15 grams of benzoic acid which represent about 88% yield. So that's all in this video. Hope you have loved this video. These are my Patreon supporters who are financially supporting me so that I am able to purchase new equipment and new chemicals and I am able to do more videos. You can also support me via Patreon or even PayPal. The links of both of them are given in the description of this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not done yet and click on the bell button for notifications.